welcome to the Infinity Bros Podcast, the only podcast that's perfectly balanced, as all things should be. My name is Isaac Edlin, one of the Infinity Bros, and I have a very special guest with me today. It is Sean from Metacore Nerds. How are you doing, Sean? Doing great, man. Happy to be here. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, we mentioned on the Patreon, which you guys can check out the unedited version, that I am sick. You can probably hear that in my voice, but I am doing better because three days ago when Sean and I were supposed to record this, my voice was another octave lower than it is now. And I sounded like Tony Todd's venom in, <laughs> in my voice. So, so we opted to push it back a little bit, but I'm, I'm glad we're finally making time to make this work because I've enjoyed all of your guys' stuff plug for the medical nerds here. But before we get going, Sean, I want to know a little, about, a little bit about you. So why don't you go ahead and just tell us who you are, what you do, and uh, what the Metal Core Nerds are. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like Isaac said, my name is Sean. I host a podcast called Metal Core Nerds. Basically, the basic premise is I have people from the music and podcast community, and, and we talk about pop culture, whether it's a... Uh, if you're into the heavy alternative music space, like we just had the singer of New Year's Day on, we've had members of Bayside, Story of the Year, stuff like that. It's a super fun thing. It allows music people to go on a podcast and talk about something a little bit different than they usually talk about when they have the interviews promoting their new tours or new albums and everything like that. And so that that's the basic premise. You can find everything at metalcorners.com. It, it premieres live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Adobe Radio Network. And then it goes on the podcast and platforms right after. And then uh, me and my friend Matt Roth from Hopski News, shout out that dude. We just started a new YouTube series called New Music Fridays. We'll be talking about new music and reviewing albums there. It's very, very fun. And I, I, I enjoyed diving a little deeper into the music space with that one. Nice. That's awesome. Well, I'm wearing one of my only music t-shirts right now. It's a mouse rat t-shirt. <laughs> Yes. Um, Parks and Rec. So, so I thought that was appropriate. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, that's amazing. That's the yeah. perfect combination, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's like pop culture, music, just yeah. intersecting. You know, it's great. That's good. I like that. Sean, thank you so much for that. Shout out to Metacore Nerds. We'll have the link uh, to their podcast, and you guys have a website, correct? We'll yep. we'll put a link to the website in in the show notes as well. But I'm sorry to spring this on you, but I have a segment that I did not prepare you for. I purposefully. Ooh did not tell you about this. It is the Infinity Gauntlet. Are you a heel or a baby face? If you can make any flavor cheese it, what would it be? Is it pronounced Grogu or Groku? If Keanu Reeves isn't in the movie, can it be star-studded? It's time for the Infinity Gauntlet, here on the Infinity Bros Podcast. Oh, man. So on the Infinity Gauntlet, Sean, uh, I get a couple questions from the Infinity Bros, and we basically grill you to see if you can survive the infinity okay. gauntlet. So, okay. and you know, we've never had to kick anybody off the podcast yet. So I do want to reassure you with that, but um, you know, our decision will be based on how you answer these questions. So okay. just a, you know, a little, little warning there, but I have a few questions. We're going to go for it. Uh, this is one is from infinity bro. Robbie. He asks outside of Batman, who would be the greatest front man for a heavy metal band in all of comics? Ooh, all of comics though, man, that's rough. That's a pretty wide range. Yeah, that's, that that's is a lot. wide range. I think, I think Thor would be a really good front man. Honestly, mm. there's so many good options. Thor like, would imagine, be good. Though, imagine like Venom be... as a front man. Ooh, oh, yep, yep. Yeah. I feel like he could get some real good like deep screaming going yeah yeah, yeah. i would sure. like i would like venom as a front man too or even carnage if you get real psycho oh gosh <laughs> yeah we're going to real like death metal with, with carnage yeah, yeah, yeah but i think actually you mentioned thor that would be cool because he could like you know do lightning stuff yeah. on the stage that would be sick that'd be yeah awesome. a perfect hair metal you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely oh, oh my gosh that'd be, that'd be, be great thor for sure Awesome. Yeah, that's that's, that's, a, that's pretty solid. Uh, I mean, if you just have the, like all three of those guys in the band, they can like yeah. take, take turns being, being the front guy, like lead singer. That would be pretty fun. Yeah, <laughs> that would be wild. All right. That was a good one. All right. Next up here is from Infinity Row Mark. He says, which horror franchise or specific horror film would be best served for an MCU adaptation? 
so like any normal horror franchise any normal horror five. franchise or film just like do did an mcu spin on it oh, interesting i would love i'm a big scream fan if they did some type Ooh. of like murder mystery kind yes. of thing within just like that whole vibe it doesn't even need to be like meta or anything mm-hmm. but just just like a murder mystery where they have to chase down a killer and and the reveal is something like insane I think that would yeah. be really cool. That would be fun. I feel yeah. like we've gotten a kind of a resurgence in like kind of that murder mystery genre for of sure. film. So that's that would be really cool to do MCU style for sure. Yeah, we've never really got anything like that. I mean, I, obviously, they've been experimenting with genre stuff. Oh, OK. More, ding, ding, sure. ding. Light just went on in my head here. OK, so, you know, in gosh, what is it? I'm trying to remember which comic book run it is, but it's uh, Wolverine ends up like and they they don't I, th- I don't know if it's in a spinoff or but like in the main run, he ends up killing all the X-Men. Because, oh, it must be House of M because um, um, oh, yeah. Scarlet Witch, like basically projects that they're all bad guys and he just kills them all. Yeah, that would be kind of wild, like a spin on that. Like, who is this m- m- like mutant that's killing all of the mutants in in yeah. like Professor Professor Xavier's like school or whatever and that if you had you find out it's wolverine like oh that would be be a twist all right all right damn it logan (laughs) oh that would be good all right last one here this one's for me if you had to pick a band to do a soundtrack for an mcu project what band and project would that be dude uh this just came to my mind spirit box and blade Ooh, okay. I'm not I'm not familiar with Spirit Box. So you'll have to explain that a little bit, but like anything like metal wise and blade, I feel like would be sick. So they're like a they're like a female fronted band. Um Ooh, okay. She sings too, and her voice is unreal. It's so good. So they have this awesome like spectrum, but they have some kind of like dancey stuff too, which would kind of work with um not like super dancey, but like electronic-y feeling. Right. Yeah. I think it would work really well with throwback uh, to the OG Blade movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Electronic and dancey stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that would be like a really cool fit. That'd be nice. So That's like, like my that. big thing. I've been writing articles for Adobe and, and a lot of them are like, what if this this movie soundtrack was like this? So um, I may Ooh, have one coming so up. In that the question week. was literally right up your alley. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pay attention to Adobe.com for Sean's next article. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Well, congratulations, man. You made it through the Infinity Gauntlet. You yes. did it. I don't feel like we have to kick you. Those are all very solid answers. Thank you. You can continue being on the Infinity Bros podcast. So cool. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so continuing on here, I just wanted to have a little bit of a chat of what we've been up to. So um before we get into that, I do want to plug our rating system bumper. Here on the Infinity Bros podcast, everything is ranked from a 0 to 6 point scale. 0 meaning horrible, and 6 meaning absolutely excellent. If all of the Infinity Bros rank something a 6, it gets an Infinity Snap. Do you have specific things that we rate on the Infinity Bros podcast? And that's how we do it. So, Sean. What have you been up to lately? What have you been watching, playing, listening to? What What have you been up to lately? Yeah, I mean, first off, I just got home from vacation, went to Disney for uh, five days with my wife. That was nice. Nice Ooh, to nice. Rode, the Gu- rode the Guardians ride like four times. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was great. It was a good it was a good vacation. Um, but uh, we, on vacation, we watched Killers of the Flower Moon, which I don't know why we picked a th- three and a half hour, four hour long movie to watch on vacation, <laughs> but we, we did. Wow. And, yeah, that's uh, a that's a long one, dude. It was so fucking long. I like long <laughs> movies. That movie was fucking long, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I would imagine. And OK, did you feel like it was worth going to? I feel like it was worth watching, but I will never in my life watch that again. <laughs> yeah, it's one it's, of those movies or yeah. I shouldn't even say because I haven't I haven't yeah. watched it yet, but I feel like it's going to be one of those movies that like you watch and you're like, wow, that was impactful, but I'm not going to rewatch that ever. Like I, it was good for what it was. Yeah. It served its purpose. Like I, I feel like one of those movies for me is Joker. Like I loved that movie. Fair. Joaquin Phoenix is fantastic in it, but dang, that movie is just 
heavy, depressing and heavy. Yeah. So that's a movie that I probably will never watch again. Unless like somebody's like, yeah, let's get a party going to watch Joker for some reason. <laughs> Like, okay, sure, I'll watch it with you. But, but like, I'm never on my own time yeah. going to choose to rewatch that one, probably. But, yeah, yeah. I, I totally, totally get that. It, oh, okay, it, so on our, our rating scale, what would you rate that on a scale of one to six? I didn't love the movie, I'm going to be honest. Oh, okay. I, I, probably, like, like a 3.5 or something. Okay, okay. Maybe a four. For I me, think. that 3.54 is, like, the rewatchable line like uh, anything yeah three and under i'm not yeah. watching that again yeah like ev- everything above that yeah i'll give it another shot yeah it, it's just hard because it's obviously well made it's super well acted mm-hmm. it's just uh, if you know nothing about it it's basically um it's based on the the osage murders and i just feel like the the point of view of the osage was like ungodly lacking in the movie right yeah and lily gladstone is in it and she represents that part but i feel like she was like highly underutilized she was great in the movie it's just it's hard because i feel like it's just like three bumbling white dudes who do this super terrible stuff and they and it almost feels like a joke sometimes like it feels too goofy like they're just mm. bumbling idiots who got away with this super terrible stuff and then when the consequences kind of catch up with them it doesn't even feel like they're real consequences and i think that's my biggest problem with it is that and like a lot of people have been like oh it's so emotionally draining and i was like it didn't even it didn't land that for me Hmm. uh and i think that's the biggest bummer because i think there's a lot of good in it i i I, it just didn't like if i compare it to another movie like oppenheimer this year like oppenheimer was this is my favorite movie of the year i don't think anything's going to top it and I, i feel like they did what killers of flower moon failed at where it's like it was long movie but i never felt the length i was so engaged throughout the whole thing Mm -hmm. it's just the way killers of the flower moon's kind of pace just feels so weird to me i I don't know you kind of have to watch it to get it but it just kind of all just happens and then at the end you're like oh okay i guess yeah right the the third act is the best part because that's like jesse plemons as a character and he comes in and it kind of like really picks up and the story does start to come together but I don't know, man. <laughs> didn't didn't love it. Like, hmm. like I said, it's super well made. Like, it's definitely yeah. worth watching. And your experience could be totally different than mine. I, 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 obviously, on the internet, there's a ton of love for this movie. It's a Martin Scorsese movie. Of course, there's going to yeah. be. It's right. just, and that's kind of my I, like. Yeah. Just what I've been hearing from everybody is that it, yeah, it's super well made. There's good acting in it, but it just doesn't like land basically for for a lot of people. And yeah, I would Jarrett, one of our one of our uh, cast members, is has family that is native. And so he comes at it from a really unique perspective and he kind of oh, yeah. echoed that, like that, you know, the, it's just kind of a weird perspective that the movie is like, you know, going at, you know, they should have included more, you know, like native perspective, like you were saying um, in the movie. So yeah, I, I think, uh, I think that's definitely valid. So just, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. What else you been getting into? Uh, my wife and I just randomly out of nowhere started uh, picking back up Sabrina, the Netflix Sabrina. <laughs> Good timing. Good timing. Halloween just ended. So, you know, yeah, and that's kind of why we, we were like, oh, let's watch something, you know, kind of Halloween y. And we never finished the series. So we kind of rewatched oh, most okay. of season three and just finished season three going into the final season. And uh, it's a lot more melodramatic than I remember for some reason. Maybe it's just because I'm sort of surrounded by so much like very well done mature TV with like Gen V and like mm-hmm. Invincible. Is that like, is that a Netflix um, show? Like, is it back Netflix or is it? Yeah, it's like ne- Netflix original. I think it's oh, a Warner okay. Brothers TV show technically, but gotcha. okay. uh, I think I believe it's a Netflix original. And, but it, it's like a fun show. Like uh, some of the actors in it, I'm like man you are not that great but <laughs> most of it is pretty good it, it's fun mm. and they don't shy away from like the gore which is nice and stuff like that which like you can comp- it's it's like a well-made cw show you know it, it, yeah. it's, it's like it's, it's like a level above a cw show where, where they they let you go that far they really let you i mean and like it's like talking about demons and satan and shit like that it, it, it's pretty cool there was a funny thing that it, they deal with some like time stuff in it 
and they were there was like a whole like dialogue thing about time and sam's like you probably you probably love this don't you and i was like actually it's really not how it would work and she's like oh my fucking god <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole <laughs> i feel like that's such a nerd thing like how yeah. time works in in certain universes <laughs> yeah it, it's just like if you it, like loki when we get into that it's like the perfect oh, thing yeah. where it's like they, they talk about time loops and stuff like that but the way it works like doesn't work the same way that like loki works which is the, the way time travel works in loki is kind of the more rooted in reality if you talk mm-hmm. about time travel like yeah. the way it works even the time loops within the things like it works because of how time is set up in the mcu <laughs> which i know yeah. can be confusing for people because it is kind of fucking confusing but <laughs> yeah. it was just so funny when she brought that up she's like, you probably love this i was like eh, not really because it's not yeah. how it work and she was like oh my god <laughs> 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 that's great um but other than that i've also been i, I started uh spider-man 2 on the ps5 yes yep. which has been incredible i'm not that far in it i i just got to if, if anyone's been playing it i just got to coney island so i'm, I'm really not that okay. far in it. <laughs> okay so i started playing it this this was going to be on my list too so we can talk about this a little okay. bit i this is like almost i feel like i'm maybe a m- couple missions ahead of you like not not that much either so but i've like hearing people on the internet and like people in our discord and stuff saying that they're like done with the game and already platinumed it. And I'm like, so many people, how, how, like so many people are done with this game. And granted it is like a pretty tight game. Like it doesn't take a lot of time to finish, but still like I'm an adult with kids and a job. Like how do, how do you guys yeah. get that done so fast? Zane on our, our podcast, one of our co-hosts is, already platinumed it as well but he is an adult with no kids and no (laughs) no family so when he's not at work that's what he's been doing so that's fair you know like if that's you then okay that's how you finish the games and i'm a little jealous but (laughs) yeah (laughs) but yeah it's 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 really good so far dude i i absolutely loved the first game and miles morales so and I'm a, obviously a, I'm they get I don't know if you can see much. I've got oh, Spider-Man oh yeah. Lots everything of back here. <laughs> this one is I mentioned this a few times on the podcast, but this is my favorite like possession. It's a actual movie theater poster from Spider-Man three. Dude. And yeah. not the greatest movie ever, but that might be the my favorite poster of all it's time. Like it's so huge. it's so awesome. Um, I, I fight with people on a daily basis about what the worst Spider-Man movie is. So, you know, amazing it's, it's not 2. Spider-Man three. Yeah. It's amazing. Spider-Man two. You're right. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's really good so far. Miles Morales was fantastic. Like oh, I love, I love how they integrated, like, you know, the, the two Spider-Man system so far. So cool. And like, it's just, it's so cool, dude. Like if you're just swinging around doing nothing, you can just switch to, the other spider-man anytime you want it's amazing like as long as you're not in the middle of a big you know long cutscene mission type of thing and yeah I, I just love that part of it it's so stinking good so and i venom is one of my favorite like characters Same. as well so and i haven't even gotten to yeah, anything <laughs> venoms yet so i'm i'm anticipating this game to be my favorite game of the year for sure yeah. Maybe even crack like my five top five games all time because so yeah. far it's a six out of six and I'm totally biased. So, you know, you don't have to listen to that, but that's yeah. that's what I think of it so far. I, I'm the same way, too. Like, I thought the first game was perfect. And my only complaint about Miles is that it was too short, which, I again, it was like kind of like a surprise thing. They're like, oh, there's a Miles Morales game that's continuing on the Spider-Man stuff that comes out next month. You know, it was kind of such like a whoa, OK, cool. So I wasn't even mad about that, you know, but yeah, like even the opening scene, the stuff with Sandman, I'm like, how is this? Oh like, how is the, how am I playing this right now? That's like all yeah. I thought. I was like, how, yeah. wow, how is this real? Like, what the fuck and is like, that going on? To, to have that as your opening like scene was just like, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. I don't know how else to feel about this. This is just incredible. And that black cat mission. I did mm. not see that coming. I was yeah, like, what me the neither. <laughs> what is happening right now like, what is this this is <laughs> wild like i even tried to explain that to my wife and she's like whatever cool <laughs> <laughs> that's i feel like that's what she, my wife says like anytime i try to explain any nerd stuff to her she's just like mm, okay cool <laughs> i don't understand anything that you just said but great 
yeah glad you're yeah. excited about it <laughs> yeah it's cool because she, she watches like a lot of the marvel stuff with me and she's been watching gen v with me which is which has been really cool oh, she's nice. like super yeah. into gen v which i'm like yeah. stoked about because that show is fucking incredible it's so um, good but yeah it's it's most of the time she's like you like me trying to talk to loki with her that's like not gonna happen <laughs> She's like, I don't even know what's going on in the show anymore. And I'm like, that's yeah. fair. My wife gave up on the MCU basically after Endgame. Like, we'll still go out to all the like big premieres together. She likes watching the movies with me and stuff, yeah. but she has not watched any Disney Plus show, has not really had any interest in any of that, which like, you know, fair. So that's <laughs> fair because there's been so much content that has yeah. come out in the past like three years that it's just like Ooh, all right, <laughs> got to yeah. take a breather here. For us nerds, it's like, yes, this is the best thing ever. But for the casual audience, it's like, wow, that's that's a lot of stuff I got to watch. Yeah, there's stuff that she's definitely skipped. And there's stuff that I've been like, you should really watch the show. You'd like it. And then we've started like Miss Marvel. I was like, you you would like Miss Marvel. And she watched and she liked it. And then we just fell off. And even She-Hulk, she watched most of She-Hulk and thought it was fine. Just thought it was like fun and, and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. Secret Invasion she didn't even watch, which is like that fucking matters anyway. Um, <laughs> she's like kind of been watching. Mo mostly she's been like in the room as I'm watching Loki. <laughs> More yeah, than right. really watching Loki. Because yep. even I was like, you need to watch the season finale of Loki season one. It's so important. And she's like, I don't even know what just happened. In the like, what <laughs> I've watched. I've watched a couple episodes of Loki with my wife in the room and she starts watching and I'm like, oh, do you do you like this? And she's like, well, I really like Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston. And I was like, okay, that's totally fair. Like those yeah. guys are amazing in this show. So yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally with you there too. She, I think she loves going to watch the movies. It's interesting. I, I'm now, cause I'm at the point where I get to see movies early because I'm seeing the Marvel next, next Tuesday and she's yes. not going. So I'm like wondering if I'm going to see it again with her or <laughs> she, she does not like captain marvel she like oh, really okay does not like that movie at all it's mm -hmm. probably like her least favorite mcu movie mostly because she's like disappointed it's supposed to be the first right you know, let mcu yeah, movie that's in a letter down totally fair totally, yeah. totally fair. Mm -hmm. i get it. it's near the bottom of my list too i don't hate it but it's down there you know i've had so this conversation know. so many times like the bottom of my list which we've talked about that we've we've done a list before at some point i don't remember what episode but like i think I think the Incredible Hulk was like my bottom one or no, maybe it was Thor Dark World. I think it was Thor Dark World, but I still rate that like a 3.5. Like it's not like I don't hate any of the MCU. Like it's all yeah. like fun and I will watch all of it. But like, you know, it's everybody is like, oh, it's the worst movie. I was like, you have not watched a lot of bad movies. If you think anything exactly. in the MCU is <laughs> exactly. bad, like there are way worse movies out there than anything in the MCU, man. <laughs> Just watch more movies. Yeah, that I say the same exact thing. I was like, <laughs> you need to watch more movies because <laughs> I've seen some bad movies. At least these movies, for the most part, are very well made, pretty well acted for the most part. You right. know, and have yeah. like fun. Like at least they're fun. The only thing if that you don't I, like them, that's totally fine. But like, totally you have fine. to like at least acknowledge that this is a a well made movie. Yeah, the only one that I, I will say that I probably dislike fully has been Secret Invasion. That that's like the first. Mm -hmm. I was like, I've been disappointed by. Yeah. this that's the disappointing, only thing. disappointing in like big capital letters like disappointing yes. is a good good word to sum up that series for sure yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure anyone who's listened to anything i've done i've said it many times so people probably yeah. get it at this point <laughs> but i was yeah. i was very disappointed by it yeah absolutely um you mentioned something that i've been watching as well is gen v i've definitely been loving this series and i i kind of was like you know, they started promoing this at the beginning of the year. And it's kind of like, eh, sometimes these spinoffs of these shows just don't really turn out great. So I was kind of yeah. like, you know, apprehensive, still, still like cautiously optimistic because I love the boys. I think the boys yeah. is incredible. One of the best shows we've gotten in a while. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to watch this. Definitely going to, you know, give this a proper shot and, it has been it has exceeded my expectations. I think it's been phenomenal. Yeah. So but yeah, is the gosh, finale I'm thinking about it, is the finale this week? It's tonight. tonight. Yeah. Oh my yeah. As we're recording. Yeah. It's crazy. I probably yeah. won't get this episode out tonight. But uh, right. For those of you guys who are listening, 
we're excited to watch the finale tonight. So, oh, so there exciting. you go. It's going to be amazing. The sh- yeah, I, I've been all the acting is phenomenal. I love that they are in that universe and it feels like the like boys, yeah. but they didn't push any like characters or, you know, stuff from the boys into this show, like forcefully, you know, like everything no. feels very natural in yeah. this show. So that's the one thing that I'm like very appreciative of this show. It's man, if you guys like the boys at all, you have to watch, watch Gen, Gen Z v. or Gen, Gen Z, Gen <laughs> V. I, I help out with youth groups. I'd probably say Gen Z a lot, but Gen V, it is, <laughs> it is phenomenal. Uh, it's but so yeah, crazy because I was watching Sabrina and didn't realize that Maria is in Sabrina. She's like one of the main characters. Really? That is yeah. interesting. Okay. I knew that Andre, Andre is like the, the cousin to Sabrina in the show. Okay. And I'm like, I'm oh, so wow. So there's the yeah, a few different he, characters. Cause he's incredible. But then I didn't realize like one of her best friends in the show is Marie. I was like, wow. that's her. I was like, what? Her. <laughs> like, I didn't even realize. Yeah. That's yeah. She looks a little awesome. bit younger. And, she, and in the beginning seasons of Sabrina, she wore glasses and that for, it was like the, old comedies like movie trope where they took off the right. glasses and they look different mm-hmm. uh yeah. but it, it kind of worked uh that's and i was awesome. like oh wow that that's the same girl i had to look it up just to make <laughs> and i was like I, I think that's marie from gen v but it is. But yeah they took two <laughs> of the, the main castles. characters from sabrina they must have i don't know if there's like some crossover in the hmm. teams or something maybe yeah but i was like huh interesting like interesting, interesting that they brought two of the people over from there but yeah yeah the show's incredible that's cool I think yeah, it's redefined anyways, what spinoffs can be for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think. And like with the storylines that they've got, I know they've I've, I've heard a lot of speculation mm. and stuff about how Gen V is going to tie into the next season of the boys. Like I've heard some people say that it will like basically the boys will pick up from Gen V sense. where it leads off. I'm not like they would have to do something big. Well, I'm assuming they will do something big at the end of this finale episode yeah. to kind of push that. But I mean, either way, this show deserves more seasons and I'm fully on board with, you know, anything that the boys universe oh, yeah. does at this point. So definitely worth watching if you haven't dove into that one yet. All right. One more thing that I wanted to, Oh wait, we're, we're going to talk about load Loki a little bit later. We're going to review those. So I'm going to hold off on that. But the one thing that I wanted to ask you about, cause I know you've gotten a little bit of a sneak peek at is invincible season two. So we are, I think when, when did invisible come out? That was that 2021 Dude. Is that two years ago now. It's been two or three years. It's been a while. That was, we always do every year. We do a end of the year show and we like rank our yes. top movie and TV show. Invincible won hands down. Um, whatever year that came out, like wow, all across the board, all the infinity bros Holy loved shit. invincible and it won that year, whichever, I think it was 2021. I don't think it was last year. So yeah, we all love invincible. Very excited for, season two which also is dropping tonight am i yeah i think at midnight pacific time so very excited about that i heard you got a little sneak peek so can you tell us anything about that yeah yeah i, I can give like my non-spoiler thoughts for sure yeah uh, well i guess by the time it comes out the first episode will be out but i'm not gonna that's spoil. probably true not gonna <laughs> yeah yeah non-spoiler sure. thoughts is great yeah. <laughs> we'd love that <laughs> it's, it's the way it just continues everything from season one is so perfect because the events of the finale weigh so heavily over. I've seen the first part of season two. I believe it's, it's four or five episodes. I don't remember, um, but it it just everything is so impacted on that. You see Mark really struggle with not wanting to be Omni Man. You see Debbie really struggle with half of her life being a fucking lie to her and, and everything else like it. it takes everything you love about invincible and cranks up to 11. Like if you love the first season, you're going to love where they're going and they really are. It's, it's a big setup. This, this whole first half, which makes sense how, why they split it into two parts, but it, it's such a massive setup and they're setting up so much stuff and it goes in directions. Like I swear to God, you're not expecting, especially if you haven't read the comics, which oh I haven't gosh. read 
but I read pretty much the comics that covered season one after season one aired for the most part. And I have not read. I decided not to read ahead so I can be totally surprised when I watch the show. (laughs) Yeah. The Invincible comics are phenomenal. If you are a comic book fan and you haven't read those, you need to get into those because they are absolutely phenomenal. very close to the show they, they just change yeah. a few things up from the show to the comics and kind of just elevate things in in ways that uh because robert kirkman who made the comic is very involved with the show so he That's he's awesome. even went went on to say like hey this is my chance to like make things better you know really look at things and, and switch things up but it, it is awesome and i can't wait to see how this season kind of culminates and i'm very stoked to see that season three is you know pretty close ready to go so we're not gonna have to wait years Ooh, for the next wow. season. okay good. that's amazing which is good but if you're an invincible fan you're gonna be stoked that invincible is back for sure so how would you rate the four to five you said four or five episodes you said? yeah it's four or four or five episodes okay. I, I would how give it would you rate that right like now? a 5.5 or a six like close to it, it is so good like yeah. I, I don't know like it, it's like the emotion is higher the stakes are higher the action is just as brutal you know, it, it, it just takes everything you loved and yeah. just keeps elevating it. So Kicked it up a notch. Yeah, that's incredible. Definitely looking forward to that. By the time this episode airs, it probably will be available to watch the season premiere. So yeah. uh, definitely check that out. Um, but I think we are ready to get into our Loki review. Sean, are you ready for this? I am so ready. So for those of you guys who uh, <clears throat> have not seen episodes three and four of Loki, we are this is your official spoiler warning. We are going to be spoiling that and all of the previous episodes. Not going to get into episode five or six, which drops tonight and will be out when this episode drops. But or sorry, is it five tonight? Five is tonight. Five tonight. Yes, five, because finale will be next week, which yes. is bonkers that we're getting to the finale already i cannot believe that but anyways uh yeah episode five will not be reviewed so episode three and four are the ones we're talking about today but here's the official spoiler warning this is prepare yourself an infinity bros prepare yourself spoiler (laughs) warning all right, Loki, I want to get kind of your background thoughts first. What did you think of season one and then kind of like the hype leading into season two? So season one, uh, my, easily my favorite MCU series. And I think season two is only elevated season one too, it, it, like retroactively it has made it even better. And I, I think it's probably somewhere near the top of my MCU rankings. Um at least top 10 for sure. I, I just think it's so well done. It's so well written. They do a thing where they, they totally change the Marvel formula where the finale isn't some big CGI fight. It's literally a conversation. And I love that. I, that's been my favorite thing about phase four and five is they've taken time to really slow things down and have these like character conversations. And I think this show does it the best of any of them. And I love that season two has only gone more into that. But we talked about time travel stuff. I love time travel stuff. I love multiverse stuff. So once you do that and you do it well, you, you have me. I'm 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 in. I'm in. You know, uh, and it, you know it's like a sci-fi weird time travel show. Like I, I there's that's like my favorite genre. <laughs> so <laughs> the fact they can do that in the MCU and, and Tom Hiddleston as Loki is just dude one of the best. Uh, yeah, he's got phenomenal. it. Like, he has to be. You're going to hear me talk about this a lot. He has to be one of the leads of the Avengers movies. Has to be. That would be wild. He has to be. It makes no one makes more sense than him. Yeah. At this point, like he's like the guy that's remaining from like the OG, you know, Mm -hmm. MCU. I I even mentioned like (laughs) one of our previous Loki reviews. I was like, hey, if, uh, mobius loki and ob become our new, new trinity. mcu trinity then so be it like i'm totally on board <laughs> if I those guys are the center of the mcu moving forward Good. i would absolutely love it when i listened oh. to that in that episode i was like yes <laughs> can those guys are just so stinking good together yeah. so <laughs> diving into season two Obviously, we reviewed um, episodes one and two. I believe it was on episode 181 of the Infinity Bros podcast. You can go back and listen to that. Uh, But what did you think of those first couple episodes of Loki? 
the first episode I loved it was it, probably one of my favorite episodes until probably episode four of Marvel TV. It, it's just like the the just like the panic of it all. And, and, and this show has given us something the MCU, I think, has been lacking in phase four and phase five, which some of it is kind of warranted. Some of it, I, I think, isn't. But it has clear stakes, clear ramifications, and that is so needed. Like even in like multiverses of madness, for example, all of this crazy shit happens, but it doesn't matter because I have in another universe. Now, will I think that stuff will matter later on? Probably. But within the movie, you don't feel like it matters. And I think that's that's a big problem of that movie. And but within this, like everything like Kang feels so over looming without even really being in it. Like he right. feels like such a threat to everything. Yeah. And I love that. And I love the pace of it. So episode one, I thought was perfect. Episode two, kind of agreeing with a lot of what you guys said. I I feel like there just needed to be like one scene in the beginning, kind of explaining why they're going to get Brad. And I kind of wish they knew about Doc's bombing the stuff beforehand. So it meant it it would have made the bombing feel more important. Right. Yeah. The the way like Hunter B15 really exemplified like her pain in it, like they really did that super well. But I think it just would have amplified that acting if we knew the stakes a little bit sooner. That was my only qualm with this whole series so far is is that the pacing in episode two was a little weird. And but it's I can overlook it because of what came in episode three. Right. Like so you mentioned that. I mean we talked about that before, but like they we don't even find out that she's bombing the timelines until right before. <laughs> yeah. Right before it happens. And we're all like, Oh, Oh, okay. All right. I guess she's bombing the timelines. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like, it's kind of like, Oh, this is an interesting way to do things. And you know, I, I guess I, I don't necessarily, I'm not in the filmmaking industry. So like, you know, however they have determined all this happened, maybe they're just trying to shake things up and like throw people off of the, you know, the, mcu formula type of thing but yeah i totally agree it did feel kind of like funky just in like the pacing and it's just like oh okay all right (laughs) so much and so much emphasis even going on into three and four so much emphasis on brad which literally shows up in a clip in in the first episode and you're like oh now this guy's important Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Like, great. <laughs> Just would have been nice to get maybe a little bit more context into that, but all right, this guy's important now. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, anyways, I think that was like a, it was a good building episode, but yeah, definitely probably didn't measure quite up to episode one for sure. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. leading into episode three. So again, g- generally how we do things on the infinity bros podcast is we talk about um, the characters and the first thing I want to lead out with what we can kind of group them together is Mobius and Loki, Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston. And they just are the, I feel like they're the reason why this show works. Like these guys just are phenomenal actors and through again, first couple episodes as well, their relationship and how that's all developing just chef's kiss like it's just so stinking good i could watch those guys in like a buddy cop show just go into a different like <laughs> top period in time like every episode oh that would be actually awesome. if there was a murder mystery tv show and it was just them solving it please that okay there <laughs> you go yeah that's a great call back to that you got like question that would be perfect yeah that would please. be amazing yeah. but yeah i mean and this start of episode three almost feels like that buddy cop like just does go yeah, back yeah, to yeah. a different time period they go back to you know 18 is it 1893 or something or 1863 or something like that yeah no it's 93 because that's when kang has grown up or sorry uh victor timely yes. who we'll get into a little bit but like it was just so cool going back into the 1893 chicago i've raised in the old timey costumes you go into the theme park and it, the time period thing was perfect they did yeah. they knocked that out of the park and it was just I, I this was a really fun episode and we get into victor timely who they they see you know doing his show and this also if you guys remember, rewind back to Quantum Mania, the yeah. post credit scene is a little clip from uh, Loki seeing Victor Timely and he's like, that's him. And you just like this is Tom Hiddleston, just peak 
Tom Hiddleston. You see the fear in his eyes. And you, like, I'm more scared of Victor Timely in that moment than I was almost all of Quantum Mania with Kang. Yeah. Right? Like, because Loki sell, or Tom Hiddleston sells it. He's just like, that dude is terrifying. <laughs> and that was such a cool moment. I love that they, you know, obviously they probably just took that clip and used right. that for yeah, the uh, quantum mania post credit scene, but such a cool callback. I absolutely love that part of it. Yeah. It was so cool. Like, like you said, their dynamic is so perfect. It's so much fun. They are so, they work so well together and Tom Hiddleston, his acting and, and the way he treats this character is so incredible. He's like him and Rocket are probably like the coolest characters in the MCU right now. Just like the, yeah. the way they've been handled and written. And I love how he he brings up and like reminds us that this is not the Loki we lost in Infinity War. This is the Loki that was trying to take over New York like a week ago. Mm, and right. I love that he I love that he brings up even the shit he did that was evil. Yeah. He's like right. that was me being angry at my family. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, how are you making the shit that's so diabolical just feel so relatable? Like yeah. you're a fucking god, and I like, <laughs> like I love yeah. you so much. It's so insane how they do this. Like they yeah. took all the great character building they did within the normal MCU timeline and phases one through three, and they just made it better. You yeah. know, it's yeah. I heard someone talk about this thing where uh, they talk about like Loki's glorious purpose, and they they were talking about how season one how they realized that the glorious part was what he was really after, and now it's him finding his purpose. And I thought that was Ooh, so well said. Interesting. Yeah, that's, I was like, damn, that's a cool that's, perspective. That's so good, and I love the conversations they have because the conversations they have with this like with him with Sylvie, him with Mobius. It's like no one's really wrong in the conversation. It's right. two like very good viewpoints that you can see both sides, and, and it, that's what makes the show so interesting. Is that yes. you're like no one's really wrong here. Right. And exactly. I love that kind of stuff. Yep. Well, and, it, and you know, it goes back to the finale of season one where like, I mean, who he remains gives him that option. Like, hey, you can kill me and you guys will have to figure it out or right. you can leave it and just keep it going the way it's going. And like you look at those two options and you're like, I don't think there's a wrong <sighs> option here. But also, there's not really a right option. (laughs) So it's like, ah, man. Okay. So look, obviously, Sylvie chooses the kill he who remains. And here we are in season two. So but yeah, you're you're totally right. Like it. That's what makes this season interesting is that there's no clear right or wrong. Unless we're talking about Ravona, which we'll get to in a few (laughs) minutes here. But yeah, like Sylvie and Loki are kind of at odds, even though their goal is pretty much the same. Yes. They just have different ideas of making it happen. So, yeah, that's what makes this this season so, so interesting. Uh, we talked about Ki Hui Kwan as OB starting in, which I think he shines in that first episode so much. Like, I, I love him and his character. And he kind of he takes on a little bit more of a minor role in these, in these, you know, uh, yeah. later episodes, but he is perfect. And he pairs with, with Casey <laughs> and they're just like tinkering, like messing around, doing all these things, but he's kind of in the background, just like, you know, kind of like figuring out what the next steps are. But I think he is just a perfect addition to the MCU. So like, good, dude. Just po- just positivity just like radiates out of him every time I'm watching him. It's so good. Even him saying, we're all going to die. It's like somehow. <laughs> I know. Cool, it's like, not even like. Endearing. It's, I don't know. It's, exactly. He says it in like a positive way somehow. And you're like, wow, I don't know how he does that, but it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I Either think way. it's episode two when they they bring that temp ad that uh, Brad messed with and then he asks and it's not in like a like a like a mean way or anything. He's just like, do you think this is more important than solving the temporal loom? And they're like, <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. But he says it in such <laughs> a way that's like it's not like disarming or mean yeah. or anything like it's such a genuine response. Yeah. Like, I, my, like only he can bring that type of energy to this. And yeah, only he can do that. And one of my favorite parts so far of this whole season is that first scene when they meet him and Loki is doing the time slipping. Um, he, you know, says, oh, I've never seen you before. Time slips back. Like, I think he mentions it's like 400 years or something like yeah. that. And then he's like, oh, yeah. And they meet and they he Loki has him make that. And then he time slips back again. And then he's like, 
oh yeah i remember now <laughs> like that, that was, was just oh it was so perfect and he played that part so well it just it again he's such an endearing person that that yeah. character that he plays is just phenomenal i i yeah. love it so much so looking forward to seeing a lot more of him in the mcu even if he is kind of relegated to like being a loki character i'm i i'm give me everything ob i i love that yes. guy i love the tva that guy really do, <laughs> <I> really do. <laughs> oh man so good all right so let's jump a little bit to victor timely so we haven't seen jonathan majors really at all up until this i mean we saw him as he who remains in the finale of season one and this season we haven't seen him because obviously he died yep. and this new variant victor timely uh they pick up in C in episode three and he is in a large majority of episodes three and four yep. and say what you want about jonathan majors the dude kills this role like he so is <laughs> doing such a phenomenal job as victor timely and he who remains like last season that was one of the best parts of that finale was that how he played he who remains like it was just so stinking good yeah, and so good. he picks it up and he's playing a completely different version of kang in this and man i'm i'm so stoked to see how many different like personalities of Kang or different multiverse characters of Kang that we're going to see. Cause I'm excited to see how he comes up with each of these different variants. Like he did such a great job plays like kind of like a, an eccentric, you know, inventor uh, from the 1890s and he nails it. Like it's so good. Yeah. I love that. He's kind of like a con man and he kind of like, it makes sense that he's a con man because he's a, a black inventor in the yeah. hundreds, you know, like it right. makes so much sense. And I love how they didn't shy away from that kind of stuff too, or how, how they were like, Oh yeah, of course he would be treated like this. Like it makes, it makes perfect sense. I right. really love they did that. And I love, you were talking about like this aesthetic. They I love how like even the Marvel fanfare was like that aesthetic. Oh like, yeah. Like the, like the piano, like yeah. oh, that was so and good. They, and they even played with like some of the hijinks is like very like three stooges almost. Like I, I love <laughs> yeah. I, I can right. see some people think it was goofy, but like it fit with the vibe so much. It that fits I really, so well. Really liked it. Like yeah. if they if they keep up that like perfect fit for that time period and they yeah. go to a bunch of different ones. Obviously, we only have episodes five and six left in yeah. this season of Loki. So I don't really have time for that. But like, again, a buddy cap show with Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston where they just go to different time periods. Oh, man, I would watch that so hard. <laughs> Also, what a wild Easter egg of having Balder the Brave in episode three. Yeah, right. That was that was awesome. <laughs> and like, I love well, Loki's like little side comments too. He's like, I'm taller than that. Like Balder's, <laughs> not, Balder's not that big. <laughs> I yeah. think he said something like that. It's just like he's still like we see him becoming softer, you know, yeah. as the season goes on, but he's still got that Loki. He's got arrogance that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to him which you know tom hiddleston plays that so well yeah so that was, it's been cool it's just like you've seen the character evolve but you've seen him kind of go back to that villainous nature in order to get things done you know yeah. but it, it's cool to see him still have that because right if he's going to be one of the people that are going up against like the actual Kang or the council of Kangs, like we need that version of Loki right. still, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like you, it, it is really interesting to like, you know, back in season one, he's the Loki of old, like the 2012 yeah. Avengers Loki. And it's cool to, you know, see him evolving. But then during that scene where he's interrogating Brad, he kind of like you see him kind of slip back into that like villainous like, you know, and you're oh, totally yeah. right. Like they're going to need that to, to face down Victor T or <laughs> as we'll see in <laughs> at the end of episode two, is not Victor Timely anymore. Kang and, you know, whatever variant is going to come next. But it's just, man, they they do such a fantastic job. Loki or Tom Hiddleston as Loki go and play in both of those yeah. characters, like the kind of the softer, he like kind of understands now what Thor has been going through. Like, you, you right. know, like there's such a sharp contrast from 2012 villain Loki and then going to like infinity war Endgame Loki. Well, like infinity war Loki, since he basically is not an end game at all. Yeah. Uh, but 
just like he's softened by that point. And now we're seeing it kind of happen again in a different, a different route. Yeah, yeah, just it's it's phenomenal. And that like that going back to what we were talking about before, where Tom Hiddleston is like the OG guy from the original, you know, phase one. Like he's the guy that still remains. And, you know, we still do have Chris Hemsworth as Thor still. But right. Tom Hiddleston just is knocking it out of the park with this series so incredible and we get the <laughs> okay so we've talked about most of the characters in in episode three ravona renslayer and miss minutes are also back there this was the wildest part of of episode three dude <laughs> these guys ton <Yeah>. down <laughs> victor timely and <clears throat> i mean i'm just gonna skip ahead to the obvious part <laughs> miss minutes like being in love with victor timely all of us are like oh my okay well you kind of got the sense that she was in love with him but i did not expect it to come out like that in the creepiest way possible that was cool. a shock to us all oh a hundred percent it's so funny because even that and then like the jump scare in the season finale of of season one it's like she has some of the, like the most like wildly horrific Dude. MCU moments. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, oh, and, and see, episode it's four plays into it so much. Like the horror kind of like creepy aspect of of this show. It just, yeah, Miss Minutes has always been a creepy character from day one. Yeah. But this just confirms everything that we've always thought about her. And she just goes, like, it's so crazy because like she's been there from like the beginning with, with Kang or he who remains. Right. right. So she knows that Every Victor timely is not him or, you know, is soon to become a somewhat a version of him, but he's obviously not there yet, but she just <laughs> full on goes for it. And you're just like, Dude, Oh it my, <laughs> it is so <laughs> wild. And even and they, <laughs> there's one thing I wanted to bring up is that yeah. uh, there, there's like a, a big like time travel theory called the, bootstrap paradox and they literally do that in this episode they kind of tricky with it in a way which i which i kind of actually respect like totally respected because they, they it's a whole thing where the time traveler travels back in time delivers a book of how to create a time like a time machine and then they mm -hmm. use the time machine right. to go yeah. deliver the book to close a close a time loop and i was like damn they fucking did the thing i was like they yeah did the thing. they did they, it <laughs> They mess with you. It's like the big thing you need to uh, like pay attention to is once they go into the future where Victor Timely is older, it says branch timeline. And when they go mm -hmm. to deliver the book, it says sacred timeline. So it's like that moment yeah. in time created created a right. variant of because I still have a theory that Victor Timely is he who remains. Right. I don't know if it's this branch version or if it's right. And, and the, the, the crazy thing about the, the branch timelines is they can almost do anything they want with that. Like they can right. make. Anything that we've seen previously in the MCU, they could make any of that in a branch timeline. They could make anything that we've seen in Loki a branch timeline. You know, like that's that's like that was messing with my head through the first two episodes because, like, you know, when Loki comes back to the TVA and he's like in the future or the past, I think he's in the past of the TVA or whatever. And then he like crashes into the TVA and then he goes to the future and it's like, it's like cracked like the the floor is like cracked and i'm like something wasn't adding up for me there i was like are these like potentially different multiverses that he's going to instead of time like instead yeah. of like times in the tva and I, I i think at this point that would be too much to explain so yeah. I, I definitely is like time that he's going back and forth yeah. in the tva plus you know we got the kind of the resolution of the end of episode two where Loki again completes the time loop kind of like you're talking about by yeah. pruning himself. Um, so he could, you know, fix the timeline time slipping or whatever. It's like they're doing a they're doing a pretty good job at like, you know, if not following those rules, kind of making their own rules and like yeah. sticking to the their own, you know, time rules. So it's been very interesting to see where they where they roll with that. Yeah, I kind of love it because it, it it's like a weird thing. It goes back to like episode one where he's talking with Obi and then Obi slightly remembers these things because it kind of plays with like the 
back to the future time travel logic but since yeah. they've already introduced like multiversal time branching logic since he's being pushed through time within the timeline he can affect that said timeline because he right. up, it, it's like all it's kind of like the end game rules where they should have created branches but the right. tba but was they were meant to do plan that. so right. it, it 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 was all meant to happen which is yeah. like a totally whole another thing is that some of these episodes, especially like episode one and episode four, it seems like there's something like looming over and like watching the events of what's happening. And especially after you see what happens to Victor Timely at the end of episode four and, and Miss Min is saying like, you'll never be him and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I swear. <laughs> um, is that, is that I feel like never all of this him. is still meant to happen. Like, I, yeah. I feel like this is all part of he remains plan still. And yeah. we're all still in a loop. Well, like, and okay. So, so you mentioned that like, that created like going back, giving Victor Timely the book that created a branch. Right. But right. like in the TVA, they're like separate. So like they're not right. really in a they can't like branch in right. the TVA, As, like according to the rules that have kind right. of been established so far, you can't really branch in the TVA. So that that I find just like fascinating. I'm like, mm, OK, so all these branches are being created. But while they're in the TVA, all the stuff they're doing is like the one timeline or whatever right like yeah exactly so loki going back and pruning himself that was like oh man okay all right all right <laughs> i see where we're going here this is oh, this is very interesting and I'm, I'm very excited to see where it leads last couple episodes here so it's okay like, with the ending of episode four like yeah right <laughs> okay so let's get into episode four a little bit we talked a little bit about ravona and miss minutes but like they cranked it up a not not even a notch like they just let the the handle fly and just threw it up when ravona and miss minutes literally kill a bunch of you know tva agents that refuse to go with her this was a mind-blowing moment because up until this point nobody has straight up died in this show they get pruned True. and True. they go back to you know the 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 whatever the multiverse that Loki, you know, went in at the end of time oh, yeah, the and they get they die in that multiverse. But like when they get pruned, you're not really killing them. You're just sending them to that multiverse to get killed. Yeah. So like up until this point, nobody's really like died. And it's all pretty like pretty PG. Like even when you get pruned, it's like, oh, OK, well, they got pruned. Like, all right, move on to the next thing. She crushes a group of people with <laughs> this to death. You hear squelching sounds yeah. when this is happening. And Miss Minutes is staring Stop. on there with a smile. And this was just, I I like my mouth was wide open during this scene. I was like, I can't believe they just did this. Wow. Psycho. That was oh my gosh. Crazy. I cannot, yeah, I cannot believe they they did that in this show. And Honestly, it kicked it up a notch. Like the stakes yeah. are already high, but like Ravona is willing to murder people, not not prune them, which she's been doing this whole time. Right. She's willing to straight up murder people to get what she wants. So that was like, oh, my gosh. I think it shows why that she was the, you know, the leader of the army for Kang to take Absolutely. Over the TV, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It definitely gives a little bit of background on her. So interesting too. Like, I mean, going back to, I think she found that out in episode three that yeah, oh, yeah, like yeah. she didn't know anything about that. Like she was the leader of he who remains army and she finds that out and she's like, Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> but you know, kind of going through that whole revelation of Victor timely is a variant, right? So he's not really, he who remains and then she and miss minutes are like you know what well granted first miss minutes like makes her move and gets shut down by <laughs> Victor Tively after miss minutes realizes that she's not going to make it with uh with Victor Tively then they come up with the plan <laughs> yeah to to take over the TVA by themselves Insane. but what a wild turn of events with with the end of that episode, like Ravona and Miss Minutes being sent to the end of time yeah. and, <laughs> and all, coming back, taking out that group of TVA agents. And then at the end of this episode, Victor Timely gets spaghettied. <laughs> I 
did not see that. I, I was my, my my jaw hit the floor. Yeah, I was like, same dude. What? Because you're like, what happens now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here we are thinking like Victor Timely is this big important, and he's going to play a huge role in the last part of the season, and boom, dead. <laughs> Like, and not just any death. This is a brutal, exp- like, Insane. Scarlet Witch Spaghetti's <laughs> John Trasinski, Reed Richards death. Like, this was wild. Oh, my gosh. And it, it it's so funny, too, because, like, I thought about when he that happened. I just sat in shock for a minute. And then after I was done being in shock, I was like, Loki was the one that was going to go out there. And yeah. Victor Timely straight up was like, no, I'll do it. <laughs> just imagine. Loki, <laughs> Loki just goes out and gets spaghetti. And we're all sitting here watching two more episodes of Loki with, you know, only variants of Loki. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's it is so crazy. I, I literally couldn't believe it. And then and then the loom explodes and you're like, what? <laughs> like, what do you mean? They yeah. lost. Dude. Right. Such a such a wild ending. OK, so. I mean, this is all this all comes back to what we were talking about before. This is all wild speculation from us from this point on. What yeah. happens next? Is the timeline reset? Is is there a sacred timeline? That's it. Like what what are we going to find out when it goes from white to something? What is next? It's so interesting because they dropped that like the last two episode trailer and they I think episode five is going to kind of be like a Groundhog's Day episode where he plays that he time slips and that's how he gets out of it. And he plays it over and over. Like they fail like a million times over Ooh. again until they finally get it right. You know, I think it's going to be that. Yeah. And I think that could be really fun, especially within this world, like a, like a nice groundhog day type of thing yeah. could, could be really cool. That would be but, awesome. But the very interesting thing is that he visits like the variants of his TVA friends on their respective timelines. Like Mobius is a jet ski salesman. Mm-hmm. And uh, it seems like B-15 is like a physician of some sort. It looks like yeah. Casey's in like a prison and there's an OB looks like he's like a like a like a professor or something. And there's this very interesting scene that has all of the like the variant versions, like not the TVA versions with Loki and Sylvie. And they're in this like building that looks like it might be showing like the beginning of the TVA because it looks Ooh. like OB's like his department, but without all the stuff in it. And so I'm like very interesting to see how this like ends and how this plays into a factor. I, I do think kind of like season one, not like a repeat of it, but it's, it's fully going to like launch. This is going to be like a big launching point to like secret wars and King dynasty. And um, cause even like going back to like the quantum mania post credit scene where they say uh, the, like the, the forbidden one is dead. In the movie, you're thinking about like, oh, they're talking about the Kang that we just saw within the movie. But I think they were talking about He Who Remains and Sylvie killing He Who Remains. Like that makes the most sense to me. Yeah, that does. Right. And they're like kind of messing with you, especially with like, you know, the Victor Timely tag being after that. Like it makes sense that, you know, that would be the case. So I I feel like it's it's finally going to like set the multiverse in motion, which it kind of already did, obviously with like allowing things like no way home and, and, and multiverse of madness and what if to happen after the whole Loki thing, because now everything's all wide open, but I I don't know. It's hard because they could do a crazy thing and just reset everything, but I I just don't think they're going to do that. And especially seeing this footage, it seems like no. And I don't think it like undermines anything that happens. It just depends how it ends. And I know like, you know, the, the writer said like these are crazier than the last, which of course the writer's gonna say that, but I, I kind of yeah. believe them with how this season has gone. The season has been I mean, you wild. almost have to, right? Yeah. Like you know, and and I wanna be a little careful because we made that mistake with WandaVision of like, <laughs> hey, wait, this is better, it's getting better, it's getting better, it has to be better, you know, like yeah, yeah, just yeah. like ramping up or whatever. But like I don't know how you can there's two episodes left. I don't know how you can wrap this up satisfactorily without like ramping up each of those episodes a little bit. And I do think it will end on a pretty decent cliffhanger because I mean, we have so much to look forward to in the MCU as far as like, how are we connecting all the stuff that we've gotten in phase four um, in phase five? Like how are we going to wrap all this stuff together to launch to secret wars? So I do think there is, 
a little bit of a, a launch point at right. the end of this. Just don't really know how that's going to happen. <laughs> Me either. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's so hard to kind of predict because right. this show has been very unpredictable, like even in season one. Yeah. Like, a lot and, of people were hoping it was pointing to Kang. And then when he actually showed up at the end, you know, like, or a version of Kang, you, everyone was like, right. oh, shit, he's here. <laughs> Sick, you know? Yeah. But like no one saw that coming because I think it was kind of like the WandaVision thing where they're like, there's no way he's going to be at the end, you know, right. And then he was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, I just I, I do think, too, it's, it is going to be a launching point again. But I, I just don't know how. Uh, right. Uh, it's interesting with that article when they said that it's going to be hard for them to continue with Jonathan Majors after the finale. So I'm very interested to see what that yeah. means. But yeah, I don't I, know. I'm like, I'm really interested because like. At this point, like, OK, cut out anything with Jonathan Major's like personal life. Right. Like the dude is a phenomenal actor. Okay. And if you if you recast or like go outside of him, I feel like there's too much built on him right now. It's yeah. not going to be the it's same impact that it was if he plays that character through right. Secret Wars. So now let's talk about his personal life just for a little tidbit. I mean, we've talked about on this podcast about how like, you know, all this, he's definitely got like, from what it sounds like a, a history of some shady stuff going on. We definitely don't want to like endorse any of that stuff, but at the same time there hasn't, I mean, the civil case and the court case really has not proved anything about the current situation that he's in. Right. So, and I think Marvel jumped the gun with James Gunn, yes. ironically, fired him and then realized, oh crap, like, yeah, he's a changed guy. Like, you know, this was 10 plus years ago of, of dumb tweets from right. a young guy and then DC hires him immediately and then Mar Marvel hires him back immediately. So Marvel is taking this slow. They're not going to fire Jonathan Majors until there's some kind of resolution exactly. on that. So take that for what you will. Like, you know, I, as as the MCU and the acting part of it goes, I think they would miss majors for sure if I they agree. were to cut him out. For sure. He is un, an unbelievable actor. Like, yeah, he's absolutely so good. Well, I mean, and everything even else, he's good. Good Creed too. 3? Like, I mean, yeah, Creed <laughs> three. I mean, everything else that we've seen him in has been has been phenomenal as well. So yeah, he's a great talent. Like if obviously if he gets convicted, like he he, he deserves to be punished for it, obviously. The, yeah, it's right. awful. But if, if he's innocent, then that's kind of been my whole philosophy with it, where it's like we don't really know what's going on. It's kind of same thing as Marvel. Wait and see right. you know, Wait and what's see. actually real and then go. Exactly. There. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, DC so, kept on Ezra Miller for a whole movie. Yeah, you know? I know. <laughs> so, like we we <laughs> we've been we there. ramped harped on Ezra Miller for a long time because he's doing a lot of shady stuff too. So you know, just it is what it is. It's it is like a conversation of like, can you separate the art from the artist? You know, and or it's you know, it's tough. Cause like, obviously I think it's, it's valid to want to enjoy everything that Ezra Miller and, you know, I, I hesitate to put Ezra Miller, Jonathan, Jonathan majors in the same sentence. Cause Ezra yeah. Miller has done some really terrible things. So I don't really want to compare them, but, For sure. but yeah, it, like you still want to obviously be a fan of what they do and yeah. not necessarily their personal lives, like what they're involved in. So it's it's a it's a tough conversation to have with people. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I tend to try and I don't know. I like the Flash. I know a lot of people didn't like the Flash. I thought they were great in the Flash. Uh, I, I thought they were like they did a really good job acting in the Flash. And obviously, I, I after the fact, it was a point where it's like they already filmed it or right. whatever, put it out. Yeah. And then after the well, fact, not only did yeah. they already film it, like, I mean, that Ooh, thing went yeah. through yeah. so many cuts, like from what I from what I remember, I think the film was filmed like way back in Ever like ago. 20, <laughs> it was like 2020 or something like it would have yeah. been it would have been a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, so yeah, probably yeah. even before all the junk 
was coming out, you know. Oh, it was way, about, way before. It was way before way that, right? Before. I think the only thing is they did, they did some reshoots after after that stuff, right. which is like, yeah. you have to do it. Like, what, what, do you, yeah. what do you want? Like, yeah. Well, I mean, I remember, like, people, t- I, even, I think our, we probably talked about it on the podcast, too, about, like, how, I mean, they should just, like, recast Ezra Miller and, like, you know, all that stuff. But, like, obviously, with how the movie turned out, probably would not have no. worked but you know like, there's people the talking movie. about that like yeah. hey uh this movie hasn't been fully produced let's just recast him and like do you know all the all the stuff with that but like there was already so much money put in that movie that oh, would have yeah. been it would have to ridiculous. completely redo the movie i mean it's even the same with this season of loki like people are uh, the st- i think the court case, the arrest happened. And I think he did reshoots after that or something, but, and people kind of got up in arms about that. And it's like, what do you want them to do? And now seeing how big of a role he is in this role, there's no oh, way yeah. that they would have had to reshoot the whole thing. They right. can't just yeah. reshoot it with a new actor. Yeah. Like they would have exactly. had to redo like, well, even like entirely. Yeah. Even quantum mania too, dude. Like I, it wasn't the best movie in the world, but one of the best parts of that That's movie it. was Jonathan majors. Yeah. Like he, he made that movie decent. Like yeah. I, I enjoyed it for what it was. If Jonathan majors was not in that movie, it would have been a lot less enjoyable for sure. Cause 100%. he was just a great menacing villain. And I'm very excited to see more of him of, of that one specifically. Cause we've gotten the, he who remains and Victor timely as well. But that like menacing Kang the Conqueror, yeah, that's the one I'm really excited to see. That I also be... think they're all three the same person. They could be. That's my theory. <laughs> <laughs> they could be. That's we'll find theory. out. That's yeah, it could be like just different points of time. Yeah, exactly. That's that's, that's the cool thing about Kang is that mm-hmm. he could exist anywhere at any time. Right. I, I think that's. And the thing is, like his goal isn't really bad. Like. In in the grand scheme of things, like yes, when you're pruning like a branch timeline, you're you're killing like, right. you know trillions of people. Like that that whole timeline bombing like literally killed like trillions of people. Like that's yeah. that's what that's crazy. That's awful when you really think about it. But like really, what he's trying to do isn't really bad. You know the way he goes about it. Yeah, a little murderous. I mean, you could you could make that same argument for Thanos too. Like I mean, yeah, oh, for sure. For sure. It's, it's not his end goal is like not necessarily a bad thing, but like killing half the universe to do it. Yeah, not maybe the best way to go about it. <laughs> when you think about it, he killed countless universes. Oh yeah, right. That's a lot exactly. of people. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, just like when we're pruning those branches too, like doing the like the bombing or whatever like not just the you know seven billion people on earth but you know how many people in the universe yeah (laughs) just like trying to comprehend wrap your mind around how many people he killed doing that just like wow that's uh yeah that's pretty wild (laughs) it's crazy so I, i like commend marvel for how they're handling that and kind of how how I know they haven't I, people have been kind of bummed with how they've handled the multiverse where I think I think it's mostly how they haven't dived into it enough. But I think even with variant type things, they've handled that super well, like Gamora was handled super well, mm-hmm. uh, being a different version like this version of Loki. Yeah. It, it, they painted a picture very much where like this isn't the same character we're used to. Right. And I, I love that they've done that at least, yeah. you know, where it. It's it's not just like a scapegoat to be like oh that person nearly died. It's like no that person did die. This is a yeah, different. This is a different version. person, right? Yeah, which I love right. that. I love that they've differentiated that because that's that's a big thing. Multiverse stuff can definitely like that happened in the CW verse like a million times. Like <laughs> like a yeah. different version came through and they, they would mm. acknowledge that they were dead, but you didn't really feel the weight of their death. And, and right. I feel like in the MCU they've they've done a good job with that. For, right. Yeah. At least in my and I, it, it kind of just naturally has worked out well in that way to yeah. where like we've grown attached to these characters and these actors playing these characters and stuff like that. And then as they're dying off, like we still feel the weight because like, hey, we have watched so many right. movies with them. But then, oh, hey, now there's another version or variant that may or may not be a different actor or, you know, whatnot. Right. So it's like, OK, we're getting into this multiverse thing. And just naturally, I feel like it's kind of been the way that we, even though, man, granted on the Infinity Bros podcast, we hyped up 
um, Secret Invasion so much. Like we that's like before Endgame, that's what we thought f- the next phases were leading up to is Secret Invasion because right. like the Scroll stuff and Captain Marvel and blah blah, blah and that just all ended with a mm, with a Secret Invasion. But yeah. I mean, I feel like naturally though they've done a pretty good job at you know introducing yeah. new things and for the future of the MCU. So. I, I agree for sure that that the secret major is just like wasted potential. Just opinion. man, a lot of buildup for not much. <laughs> no, like it, I feel like if the show started with like the, the whole president speech and they involved like some Ooh. really big players and it was really like involved yeah. Captain America involved Captain Marvel or, or Monica Rambeau, like it involved all these people that probably should have involved. Yeah, that was or, the thing, man. Like we just like, I mean, we were like, scroll watch this person's a scroll this person's a scroll this person's a scroll <laughs> and like yeah roadie was a scroll but like that was pretty much it like why didn't you no, have so, so many more scrolls <laughs> yeah even the roadie thing when they they ask the question how long have you been here and they don't answer it within the show mm-hmm. i'm like mm-hmm. yeah what like, i mean it was it was pretty <laughs> obvious that like the scroll was you know don Cheadle, and before that he wasn't a scroll <laughs> That's when the switch happened was <laughs> when they recasted Don Cheadle. Like if they did that, that's, that's pretty wild. <laughs> that would that. be awesome. Like, that is wild. You know, I saw people make that joke when it, once it was revealed, because mm-hmm. that was my guess, because I was trying to think like it's got to be an OG player, but it can't be someone too big, you know, yeah. where, where it kind of like devalues right. some of the stuff that happened. Yeah. But like, and, man, you the you which again, the secret invasion run is phenomenal. If you haven't read that comic, definitely go check that out. That one is, oh, they do such a good job with that because like once uh, Spider-Woman is revealed to be like the Skrull Queen, every superhero in that comic in the world is like, I can't trust anybody. I can't trust my best friend. They could have been a Skrull for the last five years. Like, you know, like it's so it's so huge in the comic book run and it just equated to nothing in the MCU, which was (laughs) <laughs> really disappointing <laughs> literally so, no yeah i mean you get again you get roadie but like it, it was so self-contained within secret invasion like the show that it just it ultimately meant nothing in the scope of the mcu i think they so, can play play with some cool things with armor wars with it which is like a plus i true. guess yeah uh, but that's, that's really true. it like even nick fury as a whole like all of his consequences were not felt at all. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you're like, hey, I just started a war with the humans and every alien life form on Earth, and two of my best friends died. But see, I'm going back to space. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah. <laughs> just, just really. All right. Just ended with a. I got my wife, and I'm going back fart. to space. See, you, see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Checks right. out. I mean, I guess that does like. Character wise, that makes sense with Nick Fury, but at the same time, you're totally right. Did not fulfill any consequences at all. It's just like, you know what? I just made a mess of things. I'm going to go check out. <laughs> See you guys. It just, it just blew my mind. Like yeah. even when Marie Hill died in episode one, I was like, OK, this show has got balls. OK, I'm, I'm down with this. But then by the time like Talos died, I was like, I don't even care. And I should right. care. But right. I don't. <laughs> because they not. they just like built both of them just died and then it was like all right move on to the next thing and like it, it had again no consequences like okay wh- why did you kill off this character that we've grown to love through all of this if it's not gonna mean anything yeah dude like it's... come on like if you're gonna use that for the rest of the show fine but it just like after the second or third episode, I don't even know if Maria Hills mentioned it again. Like she's just gone. I know. It's just like, oh, okay. See ya. <laughs> All right then. She just doesn't matter anymore. <sighs> yeah, and then, and then if you like compare it to like Black Widow and Iron Man, obviously way bigger roles in the MCU, but like you see them everywhere. Like you see them in like Miss Marvel. Yeah, like th- right. they're like constantly mentioned, and, and and you know, like that's like the best part of Hawkeye is is kind of the whole Yelena and Clint thing of yeah. them kind of mm-hmm. bonding over, you know, Black Widow over Natasha. Yeah. So it's like it, it's done well in other places. Like it doesn't mean it right. can't be done well yeah. everywhere else, you know. Absolutely. Yep. Well, we digress. We have uh, gotten off on no. <laughs> the rails a little bit. 
back to Loki. Okay, I'm going to have you go ahead and rate um, episodes three and four for me. Uh, what do you think of three and four? Am I doing them together or separately? Uh, separately. Let's do them separately. separately. I, th- I think I give three, like like a five. But then I give four a six. Four was mind-blowing. That episode. I love, I love three. There's nothing to take away from three. Yeah. I think if I if I like ranked the episode orders, it'd probably be four, one, three, two, I think. Probably. I think I'm Yeah, I think I'm with you. I think I would flip did you say four, one, three, two, or two, three? Two, three? Uh three, two. Three, two. Yeah, I, I think I'm right with you. I think yeah. that's what how I, I would really like two. three. I loved three, one. Three was really, OB yeah, one was... O, intro of OB in one will be like one of my favorite Loki moments, hands down. The scene of them talking in, in past <laughs> yeah. in past and present is like so one good. of my favorite things. Like I yeah. love that. So, so good. Much. But I am pretty much right with you. I'm gonna give uh I'll give episode three a five as well. Really phenomenal. Love the time period stuff. Yeah, like so good. And and um Jonathan Majors is great as Victor Timely. Really great, creepy moment from Miss Fitz. <laughs> oh my god! I, I, I like never okay <laughs> the moment where she puts herself on the, the face mannequin. of the mannequin. I was like, oh, "This is not the direction I thought this was going." No, I wanted to make oh. like the meme where it's like the the it's like the horny dog and it's like bonk with like <laughs> yeah the, the bog yeah, yeah. bonking Miss Minutes. Okay, well maybe we'll make that for you and and we'll post that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's no. perfect though <laughs> go to horny Jones. i did see the other meme that's not family friendly that was very funny you know what i'm talking about <laughs> i do know what you're I'm talking sure, about. i'm sure you know what yeah. i'm talking about <laughs> yeah but anyways so yeah great episode it was still somewhat of a building episode i feel like For so sure. but episode four best episode so far man some of the best horror elements in the mcu like i mean we yeah. We loved some of the horror elements in Multiverse of Madness, but it kind of sure. felt few and far in between. Like there, there were great moments, mm. but didn't feel overall like a horror y yeah. story. Whew, this episode was dark and it hit tense. hard. Tense. Yeah, tense, intense, tense. man. And what a banger of a cliffhanger to end on with Victor Tively being spaghettied and potentially the whole MCU being reset. Just, just wild. So anyways, yeah, six out of six for me on that one. Just a great, great episode. And this is shaping up to be, I mean, I, I loved Loki season one. Yeah. Season two is the same energy potentially surpassing it, you know, based on these last two episodes. So Looking yeah. forward to five and six. The finale is really going to be the clincher because I think the season one finale is so strong. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think there were, you know, there were some elements of season one that just maybe had a hard time like meshing within the episodes. Actually, going back and doing a rewatch really did help because like I knew yeah. where it was leading to. But watching that the first time, I was like, man, how does this all connect? Right. Like it was right. kind of it's kind of hard to make everything like mesh, but, um, but that, like you said, that finale just kind of wrapped everything together. Really great way to tie up that season leading into another season. So well, hoping for that for season two as well. Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm wondering if, if anything will lead into kind of like what Deadpool is going to be about, or at least what we've kind of heard what Deadpool is going to be about. Yeah. Like I've heard TVA. a lot of different things. Um, most recently that the TVA is going to be very prominent in Deadpool three. Yeah. So, so I'm curious. Yeah. Curiosity is uh, at a peak right now for Deadpool three. And I mean, it already was. I mean, you don't need much more. <laughs> yeah. saying, you Hugh know. Jackman is in. I mean, yeah, I don't know if it's more curiosity or just straight up hype. hype? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't care what this movie is about. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine in it. I don't care. Valid. And yeah. same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When that announcement was made, I was like, Ryan Reynolds. Oh my you gosh. crazy. You crazy <laughs> bastard. You I love it. you. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So good. But anyways, thank you so much, Sean, for joining us. We're going to wrap it up here. Uh, anything in closing that you want to mention about uh, Loki or the whole season or episodes three and four? What do you, anything else you want to mention? 
I think we covered it all. I'm very happy to to finally get to sit down and talk this stuff with you. This was, this yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah, been a pleasure. And you know, like <clears throat> for like a couple minutes there, uh, when we were getting into Secret Invasion and other things, I was like, man, we could we could really just keep going with this for a really long time but i guess we need to eventually get back to loki and wrap up some other things so i'm glad i'm glad we got to go on a little bunny trail and talk a little bit more broad scope mcu that was that was really fun yeah me too me too it's that's like it's like a it's like a trigger word for me i just i'm just going i'm gone you know (laughs) yeah dude i totally get it i totally get it Anyways, thank you so much, Sean. We appreciate you for being on the Infinity Bros podcast. Go ahead and you can go ahead and um, tell uh, our listeners where they can find you on the Internet. Yeah, just uh, metalcorners.com. Easy. You can find all the links there. All social media at Metal Corner. It's, uh, search Metal Corners on any podcasting platform. You'll find us. And if you want to check us out on Adobe, again, it's adobe.com or the Adobe app uh, every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. You can check out our show a lot. And if you're coming here to listen to Sean for the first time in the Infinity Bros podcast, you can check out theinfinitybros.com for all of our links. Uh, we're on any major podcast platform as well and prominently on TikTok as well. So if you oh, guys yeah. are interested in Magic the Gathering, Robbie just got done with his football season. He's a, he's a football coach and they just wrapped up their season and he's going to be streaming quite a bit more on TikTok now. So Magic the Gathering and Robbie and Jared are big into that stuff. And they just announced a Marvel crossover that is coming like in 2026, it's a long ways away, but still Marvel and magic, the gathering <laughs> it's coming. Nobody saw that coming, but here we are that for us, that's like the intersection of like our two big things that right. we talk about on the podcast. So for us, it's like, what is happening right now? So if you want to hear about that, you can check out our latest episode of the Infinity Bros podcast, um, episode 182, our Magic Monthly for October. Jarrett and Robbie break down all the latest sets and stuff coming out, talk a little bit about the Marvel announcement that is coming down the road. So, yeah, wherever you're listening, however you're listening, thank you so much for making us a part of your podcast experience. We love you 3000. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Infinity Bros Podcast. You can find the Infinity Bros on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, and YouTube at the Infinity Bros. You can also check out our website at theinfinitybros.com for links, reviews, and sweet merch. Feel free to send listener feedback via social media or email at infinitybrospodcast at gmail.com. (laughs) 